going to tell you right in the very beginning, this is the kind of show I wish and dream about every single week. And it's happened automatically. I mean, it just came about. It's chock-a-block with stuff. Very little time, so I'll quickly take you through the introduction. Of course, we start off with Apple's AirPod Max. 60,000 rupees for audio that actually could be one of the best that you've ever had. But remember, it's 60,000 rupees. Then the Samsung, this is the Tab A7. If your budget is around 21, 22,000 rupees and you pretty much want it all, a multimedia tablet with a great screen, very good speakers, and you can also put in a cellular connection, this is your only option. You've got a new Mi TV. Yes, Xiaomi comes up with one more TV, but this is a true budget offering. 43 inches, full HD. It is an Android TV, so it's a smart TV. It's priced at about 20, 22,000 rupees. And then we'll move on from there to the Amazfit Neo. Now, this is retro in every which way. Remember those Casios that have also made a huge comeback now? Well, it looks exactly like that, but it's got all the smarts of a smartwatch. And we'll end it all with this, the Zebronics Zeb Soul. It's got Rithik Roshan on the front. That may be a good or a bad thing. We'll find out when we review it. Let's get started with today's Gadget 360. Of course, before we get to all these great stories, let's take a look at all the great news that came in. And boy, did we have a really busy week. The biggest announcement came from Apple. Now, Apple, I think, has got a more or less a format now in the way they actually make their announcements. Part of it is Apple and part of it is what we all do. So Apple will make an announcement, for instance, the AirPods Max, uh, new noise cancellation headphones, over-the-ear headphones at 60,000 rupees. So what's the format? Apple will make an announcement and Apple has made a lot of announcements this year. Hopefully this is the last one, but remember, their way of doing things is one more thing. So it could happen, though I doubt it. Okay, so the AirPods Max get announced, 60,000 rupees, headphones. And what's the format we all follow? First, we'll go wow. Then we'll all go absolutely and totally against Apple by saying, how expensive is that? And then some kidneys and organs and other things are spoken about being sold. And then when they actually release the product, it goes on to become a bestseller, which means we all do go and buy it. So let's take a look at the AirPods Max. In another tech launch for 2020, Apple has finally released the much-awaited over-ear headphones. Apple is calling them AirPods Max. The new headphones have a premium build and Apple's own H1 chip for a seamless wireless experience. Adding a twist to generic headphones, Apple has gone ahead with its famous digital crown to control the volume on the AirPods Max and not the usual volume rockers. The latest headphones from Apple will also come with a unique looking case and will be available for sale starting the 15th of December with a hefty price tag of 59,900 rupees. Pravek Dynamics, a Bengaluru based electric vehicle company co founded by Dhaval Vinayak and Siddharth Bagri, has just unveiled India's first premium electric car called the Extension Mark 1. The company claims that the latest premium EV has a range of over 500 kilometers on one charge, which is more than any other electric car in India. The car features a 96 kilowatt hour battery that can charge from 0 to 80 percent in just 30 minutes. According to Pravek, the extension Mark 1 has a top speed of 196 km per hour and goes from 0 to 100 in just 5.4 seconds. Pretty tall claims there. Pravek aims to begin production in 2021 and manufacture about 250 units annually. Now, our next story is the Samsung Tab A7. This is an interesting tablet because it's actually catering to a very big market that is kind of unfulfilled right now. And that is a great tablet with a good screen, good sound, good processor, has a cellular connection, and yet is not priced at 40, 50, 60,000 rupees. So this is the Tab A7, around 20,000 rupees, just above that, has a cellular connection built in and actually works pretty well. We recently reviewed Samsung's high-end Galaxy Tab S7, which admittedly is the most powerful Android tablet in the market. Today, we have got our hands on another tablet that might not be as mighty as its elder brother, but still manages to pack in some great features. We are talking about the Galaxy Tab A7. 
the new entry level tablet by Samsung has some standout features like knock security which we usually find on Samsung's high end products and that's just the beginning so without wasting any more time let's get to the review in the box you will find the tab A7 USB type A to C cable and a 15 watt charger clearly it's going to take a while to charge this device more on that in a while we don't get a fingerprint sensor in the tab A7 but a face unlock feature it's very quick to register and unlocks the tab A7 in a blink we think for a tab this size the face unlock feature is a more convenient <coughs> ipad air tab A7 gets a 10.4 inch tft display with a resolution of 2000 by 1200 pixels The display looks great and is very vibrant with colors. However, the bezels on the Tab A7 cannot be ignored and are something that you might need to get used to. Audio setup on this tablet is its most powerful property. The quad speaker sets fire audio with clarity and is really loud. Since the speakers are evenly distributed, you can hear your tracks even if you cover one side of the tablet, which was very impressive. The Galaxy Tab A7 with us is the cellular variant which means we could pop in a SIM card and make phone calls with it. Now a tablet is definitely not the best device to make calls but yes it's good to have a SIM card in to provide you with more connectivity options in case you can't find a Wi-Fi. Talking about the camera specs Tab A7 features a 12 megapixel primary camera although the camera comes with a variety of features it is best for emergency use only. The situation doesn't get any better with the selfie camera either. Even though the camera performance didn't impress us, the placement of the front camera did. Towards the right side of the screen, it gives you a seamless experience when you are attending your video calls. The budget tablet by Samsung is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 662 SoC and comes with 3 GB of RAM. The chipset, although not the most powerful in its segment, manages to give a respectable performance. We switched between different kinds of apps on the Tab A7 and they were loading up smoothly without any lag. While the Tab performs well when it comes to playing light games, it's not the best for heavy gaming. After our testing, it was time to charge the Tab A7. The 7400 milliamp power battery did just last us for a good 6 hours with moderate to heavy use. However, charging it with the 15 watt charger is a long and tiring process. For advice, Use a more powerful adapter if you have one. To conclude, Samsung has successfully made a great multimedia device. The Tab A7 is great to watch movies, videos and attend conference calls. It does lag behind in being a performance device, but then again, it was not pitched as one. At rupees 21,999, it can be a great gift for a student or someone who likes to watch a lot of content. TV from Xiaomi yes this is a Mi TV 43 inch TV full HD not 4K so therefore it's priced at about 20000 rupees now interestingly enough there is a huge market for these TVs also because remember India is an untapped market in terms of TVs we may think we've reached saturation point but that's more or less in the bigger cities smaller cities towns uh, villages and everywhere else they still use a lot of CRT those big TVs there are approximately 20 22% of homes that still don't even have a tv so this is where the market really is big for a tv like this Xiaomi has been in the smart tv market in india for about 2 years now the company that follows the model of providing great features at an aggressive price has done fairly well in this cluttered segment recently the brand announced its new horizon tv lineup which will further expand its portfolio. Today we review Mi's TV4A Horizon edition. The name is a mouthful and apparently so are the features. The smart TV has a slim profile and looks really good once set up. Xiaomi has tried to break the monotonous black frame by adding a flare of silver at the chin which looks good. There's a right balance of plastic and metal on the smart TV which definitely makes it a sturdy product. Looking for connectivity options towards the right side of the back panel we see two USB ports and three HDMI ports. The TV does come with a 3.5 mm headphone jack, AV ports and even an Ethernet access all of which are located at the bottom of this smart TV. Great options but Xiaomi could have provided a better placement for these ports. 
The Mi Smart features a 43-inch Full HD VA panel with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. The bezel-less panel is really bright and videos look great on it from all viewing angles. The VA panel not only produces rich and vibrant colors, but the contrast ratio is also very impressive. There are different picture modes available on the TV, but strangely, they all pretty much look the same. Also, for changing picture modes or any display setting, you have to come to the main menu, which can be annoying. On the audio front, this smart TV features a set of 20 watt sound speakers with DTS surround sound support. Audio output was loud and clear, and we didn't miss a single beat while watching content or listening to our favorite tunes. The smart TV runs on Android 9 out of the box powered by Cortex A53 CPU which is a quad core processor decent for a 43 inch full HD TV. Since the TV runs on Google OS we do get access to the Google Play Store. Google support also means regular OTA updates which is definitely a big plus. Whether it's downloading apps or storing data on the TV, we didn't face any problem. There is 8 gigs of internal memory on board, which is ample for storing most of your favorite apps. In our testing, the smart TV was very snappy as we swiped from different menus and app trays. Clearly, the 1 GB of RAM on board has been efficiently utilized. You also get to see preloaded OTT apps like Netflix, Amazon Prime and Disney Plus Hotstar all of which support HD playback on the Xiaomi Horizon, which is a major plus. A major upgrade over the previous generation of Mi TVs is the latest patch wall application. The platform features a variety of content which is available for free to watch, but honestly the majority of them were just movie trailers. Horizon TV ships with a familiar looking Bluetooth remote control. In classic smart TV fashion, the remote features dedicated buttons for Netflix and Amazon Prime. The controller is super responsive and features a built-in mic to access Google Assistant. So should you buy the 4A Horizon TV? Well, if you're on a budget, then at 22,999 rupees, this is a great choice. It comes with Google Android support and access to the Play Store, which makes it a great product. However, if you can go a little deeper into your pocket, you might find a better deal out there. Let's move on now to the Amazfit Neo. I totally love it. A lot of interesting things in this. First of all, very, very retro. And retro, of course, right now is big. Looks like those old Casio watches that we used to wear when digital watches were a big deal. They've done a great job with it, but it's got good features also. Plus a 28-day battery life. If you are a 90s kid, then you should definitely stick around till we finish this review. We are sure that the watch on your screen does remind you of the good old days, but it is ahead of its time. Well, at least in terms of the tech that it packs in. This is Huami's Amazed Fit Neo. You won't need a thrust capacitor to relive the good old days with this one. So let's dive in our review. Amazed Fit Neo is one of the lightest smartwatches in the market. The watch looks great and sits comfortably on the wrist. However, we feel Huami could have done a better job with the build quality. The watch does feel plasticky at times. The old school design did make us skeptical in regards to how we will interact with it. After all, the majority of the smart watches we review have an interactive display. Surprisingly, it did not take us very long to understand how to play around with the buttons on the Amazfit Neo. In no time, we were able to master all the controls on this unique smartwatch and it was a smooth sail from there on. Now, this isn't an R-rated watch, but makes a beep sound every time you press a button. The watch comes with backlit support, which you can use by pressing the back button. The backlit support also comes to play when you turn on the lift to wake functionality. The digits on the display look bold and clear and it will be easy to look at the watch even in direct sunlight. The circular cutout on the display is where the watch indicates the various built-in features it comes with. You can measure your heart rate constantly or while you exercise. The heart rate sensor is fairly accurate and we have no complaints there. You can also monitor your step counts and even receive app notifications. The watch won't read out to you the entire notification but simply say the word app followed by a beep. Oh, did you mention it gets annoying? Hmm, cool. Much like all the other products by Amazfit, this unique smartwatch can also be paired with its companion app dubbed as Zep. The app looks neat and you can keep a track of your fitness goals using it. 
Zep app shows you the steps you have walked, the number of hours you have slept and the data for calories you burned throughout the day. You can also play around with some basic features that the Amaze Fit Neo is capable of from the app. Amaze Fit claims that this smartwatch can last 28 days on a single charge and we have a reason to believe them. In one week of our testing, the watch lost just about 25% of juice. Great battery life will keep you away from Neo's charger, which is good because the charging cable is too small and honestly a bit impractical. The spec sheet of the Amazfit Neo is definitely not of a smartwatch, but rather a more fun fitness band. If you don't want to go for a regular fitness tracker and appreciate the retro charm, then this is the watch for you. You can get the Amazfit Neo for a price of Rs. 2500, which keeps it a very solid option if you are planning to buy a fitness tracker. Let's take a quick break right now on the show and we come back lots more. When you've got Rithik Roshan on the product itself, that could be a good or a bad thing. The good thing, well, it seems like Rithik likes it. So therefore, he's asked them to put his picture out. The bad thing is they must have paid him a lot of money. So did they do enough to actually put in the innovation of the product? We'll find out when we actually review Zebronix Zebsol. We've been so immersed with all the latest true wireless earbuds out there that we tend to forget the humble applications of Bluetooth technology. So this week we decided to review Zebronix Zeb Soul, a Bluetooth color neck band with some decent technical attributes. The Zeb Soul comes in multiple colors. The one with us looks great in its silver profile. The neck band on the device is very solid and robust. While putting the neck band over your clothes shouldn't be a problem, it might make you uncomfortable while working out when it rubs against your skin. Establishing a connection with Zeb Soul wasn't a problem and now it's time to crank up some tunes. We switched among our favorite artists and listened to our top chart busters. Throughout our experience, we really enjoyed listening to all the music we played. While genres like hip-hop and Bollywood were crystal clear, the sound quality took a dip when we switched to heavy metal music with the output getting brassy at times. In classic Bluetooth fashion, we get controls mounted on Zeb Soul as well. The build quality of the buttons is good and they perform decently. The earbuds do come with magnets and you can attach them. However, this won't pause the music which you're listening to, which is disappointing. Things are on the brighter side when it comes to taking calls with this neck band. Every time you receive a call, there is a gentle vibration on the collar. The vibration won't stop until you react to the call. While this definitely alerts the user, it can get annoying for some. Otherwise, the call quality was great and we were satisfied with the noise cancellation on board. We used the earphones outside and it did a good job of eliminating the ambient sound. Zebronic claims that the earphones can last up to 11 and a half hours of playback time and it manages to stand its ground. We had to plug it in after three days of usage where it was our primary Bluetooth device. Where Zebronix could have done better was charging. The neck band takes two hours to completely charge from scratch. That is really slow. So should you go for this neck band? If you're a rough user and attend a lot of phone calls, then this is the product for you. While you can buy them from the Zebronix website for 3,149 rupees, you can easily find them on Amazon for a much lower price. That then was the Gadget 360 show and of course, like I said, today was a dream show. But the dream continues into the next week. We've got a new Microsoft Surface product. We've got a washing machine that is super, super smart. That and a whole lot more on the Gadget 360 show next week.